Ah uh, yes, Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon the game. Last time I took an abysmal insect only deck and showed just what it would take to beat the game with it. But beating the game with only insects begs another question. Well actually a lot more questions, but they're all similar in structure. The insect deck turned out so well and I had so much fun figuring out how to complete the challenge that I may as well see if other archetypes are possible. I'll take any reason to relive my childhood while at the same time having a new experience. So, this time I'm going to answer, can you beat Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories using a rock only deck? Let's go over what I'm working with for this challenge. Out of the 722 cards in the game, there are only 23 rock monsters. Out of these 23 rocks, 22 are available. The only exclusion is Rock Ogre Grotter number 1, which is nothing special anyway. Rocks have a pretty healthy fusion pool. As long as both fusion materials have less attack than the card they are fusing into, a rock can fuse with the pyro to make dissolve a rock, can fuse with the zombie to make stone ghost, can fuse with the warrior to make minamushi warrior, can fuse with the turtle, yeah turtles are technically an archetype, to make boulder tortoise, can fuse with the dragon to make stone D, and can fuse with the female to make mystical sand. Dissolver Rock is treated as a rock and a pyro, so it can fuse with warriors, beasts, and wing beasts to make all kinds of monsters. Same idea with Stone D, which is also treated as a dragon, so it can fuse with thunders, plants, and time wizard to make Twinnered Thunder Dragon, B Dragon Jungle King, and Thousand Dragon respectively. Ancient Jar, Pot the Trick, and Morphing Jar are also part of the Jar archetype, so they can fuse with spellcasters to make Ushioni. But for some reason only Ancient Jar can fuse with Fiend Sword to make Tiger Axe. Speaking of specific fusions, Prisman has one with Breath of Light to make the equip card Violet Crystal, Labyrinth Wall can fuse with Zone Eater to make Dungeon Worm, and for reasons completely beyond my comprehension, Giant Soldier Stone can fuse with Akihiran to make Cocoon of Evolution. As you can see, there are a lot of fusion options for rock types, so it's a great archetype to mess around with. Unfortunately for myself, I like to apply strict rules to these challenges, so messing around is not a luxury I'm accustomed to. So I'll quickly go over the rules for this challenge. First, I can only use rock monsters in my deck, which means fusion in any way is not possible. Second, I have to use rock type monster cards at all times, so farming and free duel will be more difficult. Now this next rule is a bit different than my insect challenge run. I'm going to give myself a break and allow the duplication of cards I win in duels just so I can complete this challenge in a reasonable amount of time. I figure if I win a card once, I've proved it's possible to earn the card in general. However, cards I buy using the password system cannot be duplicated. And oh boy, you're going to see how important this distinction actually is. Fourth, I can't use the disc swap exploit to get cards easily. And fifth, I have to duel everyone in the campaign. Now let's look at the deck I'll be starting with. Unfortunately, there aren't enough rock types in set 1 and 2 to fill the deck with a bunch of weak monsters. Set 1 through 4 gives us monster cards and each set has a range of power that cards have within that set. The attack and defense of a card is combined to give it a total power and that determines which set it belongs in. Set 1 has a range of 0 to 1099, set 2 1100 to 1599, set 3 1600 to 2099, and set 4 2100 to 2499. We're supposed to get 16 cards in set 1, but there are only 4 rocks in the set, so if I get 3 copies of each, I'll still be 4 short. Set 2 only has a single rock type, so I'll be short by 13. Now there's a lot in set 3 and 4, but even ignoring that set 3 is only supposed to give me 4 cards and set 4 1 card, using all of them at 3 copies each will still leave me 4 cards short. So I'm going to use Rocco Gagrota number 1 because his total power fits within set 3 and it doesn't have any outrageous advantage for using him, he's just another rock. There are 3 rock types that all are 1 point above the threshold for set 4. The Statue of Easter Island, The Thing That Hides in the Mud, and Minimushi Warrior. Using a random number generator, I added the Statue of Easter Island to get the 37 monster cards in a starter deck. The deck is looking a bit stronger than I'd like for a starter deck, but I only have so many cards to choose from and I think this is the best option to create a deck to do this run. The early campaign is going to be a bit easier admittedly, but I don't feel too bad about it because a few cards are obtainable through Duel Master K that's available to duel before the campaign even begins, so most of the deck is still technically possible. To get us to the 40 card deck limit, set 5 gave us Raigeki, set 6 Wasteland, and set 7 Invigoration. With that out of the way, let's begin with the 4th member of the blue man group, Simon Muron. With this beefed up starter deck, I should have no problem dealing with him unless he decides first turn to make something formidable. To start out this run, I put the statue of Easter Island in defense. Simon Muron knows he doesn't have a chance in beating me and attacks into it with Monster Eye. I summon Dissolver Rock, attack his Monster Eye, and the Easter Bunny attacks his light points. He sets a monster. I summon Prisman and attack Dark Plant, then attack his light points again. He sets one more time. I summon Rock Ogre Grota number one to attack another Dark Plant, and the squad attacks directly. He sets one last time, and that's the duel. 
giving me five star chips and Jinzo number seven. With no need to save with this starter deck, I head straight into the dual grounds to take on Tiana and the villagers. I set Barrel Rock in defense. Tiana tries to tack over it with Key Mace's Sun Guardian Star. I summon Stone Ghost, set it to Mercury to get a boost and attack Key Mace, letting Barrel Rock attack directly. She set to Monster. I summon Rock Ogregrotor number 1 to attack her Monster Eye. Rinse and repeat, the duel is won, and I get another 5 star chips and Tongyo. The strongest card drop you can get from Tiana, and winning it in campaign is fantastic if I wasn't doing a rock only challenge. Next up is King of the Ritual card, Villager 1. I start by setting Rock Ogregrotor number 2 in defense. Smart Guy tries to attack into it with a Moonstar Monster Eye. I summon Stone Ghost and attack. He sets a monster. I summon Stone Armor Diller and attack again. We do this dance one more time and the duel is won, winning Zone Eater. Here's where the challenge usually begins. Villager 2 is a pretty steep power creep for a normal playthrough and has the monsters to fusion summon Twin Headed Thunder Dragon, which can just flat out end the run. I set Barrel Rock in defense. Villager 2 sets a face down magic card. I set Stone Armor Diller. He fuses Burglar and Dharma Cannon to make Giga Tech Wolf and attacks my Barrel Rock. I decide to dump cards so I can get somebody to attack over Giga Tech Wolf before he uses it to make something else. He uses Final Flame on me, which does a devastating 200 burn damage, attacks Haniwa, and sets a monster. I set Rock Ogregrota number 1 as I drew into Raigeki, so I'm no longer afraid of him fusing into anything stronger. He attacks into Stone Armor Dealer with his Wolf and into my Ogre with his M Warrior number 2. I set another Ogre in defense. He attacks into it with a graveyard and the reach around hand and sets the rest of his monsters in defense. I set Barrel Rock. He attacks into it with Mr. Reachy Reach and sets a monster. With my board loaded, it's time to rain lightning with Raigeki and attack directly. He summons Flame Ghost and destroys my armadillo. I use Invigoration on Dissolver Rock and attack for game, winning Electric Snake. Villager 3 is very similar to Villager 2, having decent monsters and opportunities for strong fusions with the added possibility of a 1 in 2048 chance to have Jirai Gumo, which is absolutely absurd this early in the game. Not taking any chances, I dump my hand and set the Statute of Limitations in defense. He sets a monster. I draw Invigoration, which is great, dump the rest and set Rock over Grota number 1 in defense. He fuses Little D with Holograd to make Cyber Source and destroys my statue. I dump my hand, keeping Stone Ghost because if I draw Wasteland, the field boost plus Invigoration will be enough to attack over his Cybersaurus. He summons our mail and attacks both my monsters. I draw Wasteland and set it for next turn because there could be a chance the next monster he summons will benefit from it, so I'd rather not activate it right now. He summons Water Dragon Fairy and attacks me. I use Invigoration on Stone Ghost, activate Wasteland, and attack his Cybersaurus. He fuses our mail with Blue-Eyed Silver Zombie to make Zombie Warrior and sets both of his monsters in defense. I summon Barrel Rock and attack both. The old Predator whips out his little D and destroys my Barrel Rock. I summon another and attack his Shriveled D with Stone Ghost. He sets a monster. I summon Dissolver Rock and attack. He sets one more time and the duel is won. I get a Silver Fang. With the duel grounds completed, we have time to witness Jono get squished like the insect he is and accept Seto's challenge to duel. The coward hears his mom calling him, so the duel is postponed, which gives me time to go into free duel and start dueling Villager 1 for either House of Adhesive Tape or Fake Trap so I can start getting SNA attacks. Villager 1 was being a real fusion warrior and kept making stuff. Cockroach Knight, Zombie Warrior, Giga Tech Wolf, Tiger Axe, Minamushi Warrior, Celtic Guardian, Armored Zombie, Cyber Soldier, Dice Armadillo, Dark Witch, Nekogal number 2, Dark Elf, Mystical Sand, can this guy chill out? I even lost to him once because he fused Mystical Sand on turn 1. After 45 wins I get Dark Piercing Light, which gives me an idea for one of my favorite fusions in the game, but we're gonna get back to that later. After 49 wins, I finally get a Fake Trap, which unlocks the possibility of getting Atex. So, I move on to Villager 3 because he gives Wasteland at a 32 out of 2048 chance in SA Tech. My first win gets me Stone Armadillo, then I lose. Second win gives me Bear Trap, 
which destroys any monster that attacks me with 1500 or less attacks. So now getting SA techs is not just a possibility, but more of a certainty, if I can actually manage to beat him. This old fart went absolutely nuts in our fifth duel, fusing into Dark Witch, Garvis, Flame Cerebrus, Kaminari Attack, Cybersaurus, Mystical Sand, and Boulder Tortoise. He showed me that, compared to him, I have a little D. So I decided to hold off on farming him and focus my attention on Simon Muron to farm Starships and other miscellaneous cards like Horn of Light, which I got after four duels. The reason I want it is because it works with Rock Ogre Gordon number one, and more equips means more power. After six wins against Simon, I realize I have enough Starships to buy a decent attacking monster and destroyer golem, but remember, I can't duplicate him, so I only have one. Win seven gets me Ikaboon, another trap that destroys attacking monsters with thousand or less attack. After 17 wins, I win Spellbinding Circle, and now I can make my first and second fusion for this deck. Two Spellbinding Circles fuse together to make Shadow Spell, and fusing that with Dark Piercing Light gets the iconic Swords Revealing Light, a card you can't win normally in the game, so it feels so satisfying to get the fusion off successfully in duels. I also have enough Star Chips to buy Minamushi Warrior, which can use Horn of Light, so I'm building up the ability to get high attacking monsters on the field. With all this, I go back to Villager 3, who is still fusing great cards like Nokogal number 2 and Mystical Sand, so I lose a couple more times. But the deck is already pretty formidable, and I win much more than I lose. Win 5 gets me Axe of Despair, which is equipable to Rock Ogre number 2, Barrel Rock, and Destroyer Golem, so now I have two different equips to attach to a combination of five different monsters as well as Invigoration that equips to anything. I don't know what it was with this run. I kept winning equip cards and rock types are pretty versatile with each rock having its own compatibilities with different equips. Like how Axe of Despair works with Destroyer Golem but not Minamushi Warrior, and Horn of Light works with the latter but not the former. Win 17 gets me Goblin's Secret Remedy which only restores 1000 life points but it can fuse into itself to make Soul to Pure that restores 2000. Win 24 gives me Magical Labyrinth which is the most particular card in the game only being able to be used with Labyrinth Wall. Win 26 gets me Dark Hole, so now I have another Destruction card along with Raigeki. Win 30 rewards me with Wasteland, and now the deck is looking pretty ridiculous for this stage of the game. So I go back into the campaign to duel Jono and Seto. With this deck, Jono should be a piece of cake, right? I start off easy, setting Rock Ogre Grotto number 2 in defense. Jono is insulted by my nonchalant attitude and fuses Pot the Trick and Key Mace to show me what a real Rock type looks like in a tap. Okay, sets Mystical Sand in defense? I set Fake Trap, which he triggers with Mystical Sand, then attacks with Shadow Spectre. I set Dark Hole to use my next turn. He attacks my Ogre with Mystical Sand and direct attacks with Spectre and Key Mace. I summon Stone Ghost, attack Key Mace, then activate Dark Hole. Jonah says fuck all that and fuses Key Mace with Ancient Jar for another Mystical Sand to attack me directly. I'm forced to start dumping cards, leaving one barrel rock with Axe of Despair in my hand. Juno attacks over it with Sandy Cheeks and attacks directly with another Shadow Spectre. I use another Dark Hole. He sets a Magic card. I set Fake Trap. He fuses Bone Mouse with Dark Plant to make Wood Remains and triggers my trap. I equip Axe of Despair to Bell Rock and attack his Wood. He sets a Monster. I set Fake Trap and attack. He sets again. I dump Dissolver Rock, equip another Axe of Despair to a second Barrel Rock and attack. He sets again and uses Hinotama to do a pathetic 100 burn damage. I summon Destroyer Golem and the duel is won, but I hold off a little while longer so I can win more Star Chips. Even though Jono put up a fight, the deck is still very promising heading into the Seto duel even though he can perform some impressive fusions and has a few strong base attack monsters. I start by setting Wasteland. Seto starts off strong and fuses Mystic Lamp with Ancient Jar to make Ushioni and attacks me. I set Spellbinding Circle to prepare for next turn. Seto summons Beaver Warrior and attacks leaving me with 2500 life points remaining. I summon Dissolver Rock. Keep it at Mars Star, use Wasteland and Spellbinding Circle, and attack Oshioni. He fuses Air Marmot of Nefariousness with Griggle to make Flower Wolf, which defaults to Jupiter Star, the same as Ushioni, so he can't attack over my Dissolver Rock. I summon Barrel Rock and destroy both of Seto's monsters. He sets a monster. I summon Stone Armadiller and attack. He sets again. I set Fake Draft and attack once more. 
He sets for one last time, and I decide to go for an A-Tech again because I'm going to be farming Seto and Free Duel for Invigoration, so I may as well get a head start on the grind. Unfortunately, I fall short. Seto is self-aware and knows that he's about to see me again in Free Duel. Jono is a little too hyped for a guy who's just a spectator, and Tiana tells me what I already know. It's time to farm for the Rock Type's main equip card, Invigoration, which has an 18 out of 2048 chance to drop from Seto on SA Tech. Seto is beatable, but he doesn't make it easy. The guy is a fusion machine. Metal Fish, Cyber Source, Pump King the King of Ghosts, Mystical Sand, Ushioni. It just seems like any time I give him breathing room, he has a fusion ready to capitalize, or he just plays Guy the Fierce Knight. So I looked into it, and turns out he has a little technique I'd like to call being a cheating scumbag. He has his 5 card hand like any other normal duel. But if one of his cards is something that can be used in a fusion, he will transform another card into the needed material to make it. Despite this sorcery, I still beat him every 4 out of 5 times. Win 9 gives me Invisible Wire, which is the next tier up from Bear Trap, destroying monsters that attack with 2000 or less attack. Win 24 gets me Invigoration, so I add 2 more equips to the deck, and I also won enough starships to buy a literal wall in Labyrinth Wall. It's only 1, but 3000 defense is no joke. So, let's go beat Haitian. The deck is definitely way more qualified to beat everyone else. Maybe it's time to duel a real challenge. Who knows? Maybe I can save Egypt right here and now and live happily ever after. I keep Raigeki in Invigoration, then dump the rest. He summons Meteor Black Dragon and destroys Barrel Rock. I set Minamushi Warrior and basically am relying on drawing Labyrinth Wall at this point. He sets a Magic Card and destroys my Warrior. I set Stone Armadiller. He sets another magic card and attacks again. I set fake trap. He sets a third magic card and triggers my trap. I set another stone armadiller. He shin sets a monster and attacks. I dump dark piercing light and use Raigeki. He fuses Sangha of the Thunder and Stone D to make twin headed thunder dragon and attacks directly. I draw my Labyrinth Wall and decide to use an Invigoration on it along with Magical Labyrinth to prevent He Shin from using Megamorph and attacking over my wall. He uses Shadow Spell to negate my two equip cards and sets a monster and THTD in defense. I use another Magical Labyrinth on my wall. Now that he's used Shadow Spell, it's very unlikely he'll have another. So, I should be in the cl- Okay, I wasn't ready to save Egypt just yet, but failing my friends, my family, and most importantly the nation has fueled my determination to get back into my own time, so I jumped directly into the tournament, starting with Rex Raptor. Rex doesn't have the strongest monsters, so I opt to set Bear Trap over Invisible Wire. He fuses Lucky Trinket with La La Liyun to make the Immortal of Thunder and triggers my trap. I now set Invisible Wire. He fuses Needle Worm with Wood Clown to make Cockroach Knight and triggers my trap again. I've had my fun setting traps and attack with the statue of Easter Island. He sets a monster, I activate Wasteland, and attack. He sets a monster again, I summon Stone Armadiller and attack. This goes on for a few more turns, and the duel is won getting a Skullstalker. Let's head straight into the next duel, Weevil Underwood. As long as he doesn't have Jirai Gumo or fuses into a summon skull, I should be fine. I boost Rock Ogre Grotto number 2 with an Axe of Despair and Invigoration, then set it in defense. Weevil sets a monster. I summon Barrel Rock and attack his defense monster with my Ogre. He summons Horn Imp to destroy my Barrel Rock. I summon Stone Armadiller and attack. He destroys my Armadiller with Snake Yashi. I summon Dissolver Rock to get a Guardian Star bonus and attack. He sets a monster, and a few more attacks win the duel. There's still no point to grinding for new cards yet, so let's move on to my Valentine. I start the same way I did against Weevil and use Axe of Despair and Invigoration on Rock or Gregorda number 2. She sets a monster. I set Invisible Wire and attack her defense monster. She sets again. I use Invigoration on Stone Chin and attack. Mike can only do one thing. I summon Dissolver Rock and attack. What do you think Mai's gonna do this turn? 
That's right. She's going to attack with giant red sea snake and trigger invisible wire. The duel is won. I win a jellyfish. Mine's not certain she's lost, but she'll figure that out when I go to the next round to duel Bandit Keith and she does it. I start by setting Bear Trap. Bandit Keith is insulted that I could think he would attack with a 1500 attack monster and fuses Gigatech Wolf, Komori Dragon, and Skull Red Bird to make Crimson Sunbird. I use Raigeki to blast his bird out of the sky. He fuses Twin Headed King Rex and Machine Attacker to make Cybersaurus and attacks. I use Axe of Despair on Destroyer Golem and attack back. Keith sets a monster. I summon Minamushi Warrior and attack. Keith sets again. I summon Blockhead and attack again. He summons Ghoul with an Appetite and destroys my Minamushi Warrior. I use Invigoration on Barrel Rock. He summons Bear Ox and triggers the Bear Trap from turn 1. I finish him off and win a Mech Mole Zombie. The tournament organizers are panicking due to how quickly I'm going through the bracket, so I'm forced to take a break and catch up with Joey. Shoddy enters the scene, tells me to touch his Millennium Item, which I'm pretty sure is a euphemism, and I meet me. I give me a first edition Charizard and put it in my deck just in time to duel Mr. Wanna Touch My Item. I begin by setting Bear Trap. He fuses Abyss Flower and Serpent Marauder to make Snake Yashi and triggers my trap. I summon Stone Ghost and attack directly. He sets a monster. I activate Wasteland to give my monsters a boost and destroy his Zeragun. He sets again. I summon the Statue of Easter Sunday and attack. Shotty keeps setting. I keep attacking. The duel is won. I get the Melting Red Shadow and two Millennium Items. I show no signs of slowing down and head straight into Bakuro. Now I'm sure you've recognized that a lot of rock type cards are defensive focused, meaning their defense is higher than their attack. And Bakura's game plan is to have walls coupled with decent attacking monsters, so be prepared for a long, drawn out duel. I set Bear Trap, which doesn't make much sense as most of the cards Bakura attacks with have more than 1500 attack. But I get bailed out as he decides to set a wall instead. I set Rock with Regretor number 2 and Sunstar in defense. I set it to Sun so he can't attack over it with his many Moonstar monsters. Bakura sets another monster. I set Spellbinding Circle. He attacks with Dark Elf, which gets an added boost from his Mercury Star. I summon Minamushi Warrior and Venus Star, use Spellbinding Circle, and attack over Dark Elf. Bakura sets another monster. I set Barrel Rock and switch my Warrior to defense. He attacks it with Gemini Elf. I set Stone Armadiller and don't dump because Bakura only has space for one more attacking monster and his defense position monsters are most likely ones that are committed to being in defense, so I'm not worried about being barraged by direct attacks. Bakura uses Soul of the Pure to regain 300 life points, a weird choice, puts Gemini Elf in defense and attacks with a weakened Dark Elf triggering Bear Trap. I summon Mount Rushmore and destroys Gemini Elf. He summons Giant Turtle who feeds on flames and attacks Theodore Roosevelt. I set another bear trap. He uses Book of Secret Arts on Spirit of the Harp and sets his turtle in defense. I start planning to take out his defenses by setting Raigeki. He fuses his turtle with Crawling Dragon number 1 and Stone Ogre Grotto to make Stone D and attacks my Barrel Rock. I set Dissolver Rock. He puts all his monsters in defense. I set another Dissolver Rock. He summons Spirit of the Mountain and attacks which triggers bear trap. I set Stone Armadillo. Bakura attacks with Stone D and summons Flower Wolf to attack. I use two Invigorations and Axe of Despair on Barrel Rock, use Raigeki, and attack directly. He attacks my Dissolver Rock with Lamoon. I summon Stone Ghost, put it in Mercury to get the boost on Lamoon, and that's the game. I win an Umi and his Millennium Ring. Next up is the inventor of Duel Monsters, Pegasus. He can end this run through the tournament with a 6% chance to play Meteor Black Dragon on turn 1. I set Raigeki, which proves to be a mistake as he brushes it away with Harpy's Feather Duster. I dump Dissolver Rock and put Stone Armadillo in defense. Pegasus summons Parrot Dragon and attacks. I use two Invigorations on Big Chin, set it to Venus because Uranus is weak against Saturn, and attack his Parrot. He sets a monster. I use Wasteland and attack. He sets again. 
I use Axe of Despair on Rock Ogre Grotto number 2 and attack. Pegasus sets once again. I set a Bear Trap and attack. Pegasus tries to use Guardian Star Advantage to destroy my Ogre, but triggers Bear Trap. Two more attacks, and that's game. I win Machine Conversion Factory, which can actually be used on Barrel Rock because he has those two turrets on his back. I rip Pegasus' eye out of his skull and move on to a Shizu. I begin by setting Labyrinth Wall in defense. The only card a Shizu can have to attack over it is Black Skull Dragon. She sets a monster. I activate Wasteland, and now I'm untouchable. She sets again. After a bit of back row shenanigans from myself, I summon Barrel Rock and attack one of her defense monsters, revealing Roaring Ocean Snake. She sets a magic card and attacks my Barrel Rock with Parrot Dragon. I set Rock over Gritter number 2. She attacks with Roaring Ocean Snake and sets a monster and Parrot Dragon in defense. I set Dissolver Rock. Ishizu replaces Parrot Dragon with Sea King Dragon and runs into my wall. Things happen, other stuff occurs until I'm ready to attack and win the duel. Ishizu ended up using three Swords of Revealing Light on me, which delayed the duel considerably, but Lab Wall kept me protected until I was set up to win. Going through the tournament like I just remembered I left the stove on, I jumped straight into Kaiba. Before going into the duel, I replaced the Bear Traps with another Spellbinding Circle and two Dark Holes, just so I have more answers for his ace monster, Blue Eyes White Dragon, which he plays on turn one 27% of the time. I start by setting Wasteland. Kaiba gets the 27% odds and plays Blue Eyes. I take a gamble and set Spellbinding Circle for next turn. Kaiba won't fuse because he feels he's in control of the duel, so the only monsters he can summon that beat me next turn are Parrot Dragon, Man-Eating Black Shark, and Thousand Dragon. He plays Illusionist Faceless Mage and I survive another turn. I boost Rock Ogre number 2 with Axe of Despair and Invigoration, activate Wasteland and Spellbinding Circle, and set it in defense. Kaiba fuses his Mage with Thunder Dragon and Kairu Shin to make Gold Faithful, puts it in defense, and ends. I have Raigeki to wipe out his monsters, but I find that Kaiba likes to save another Blue Eyes in his hand if he has it, to use if the first one gets destroyed, so I opt to set Stone Armadillo in defense. He attacks it with THTD and sets a monster. I boost my Ogre with another Axe of Despair, and now I attack his twin-headed Thunder Dragon because... Well, you'll see. He fuses his Parrot Dragon with Kaminari Attack to make another faithful Thunder Dragon, and because he thinks he can beat me due to the CPU not checking for equip cards used, he attacks into my Ogre with it and his Blue Eyes. I set Invisible Wire and attack. He sets a monster. I use a third Axe of Despair on my Ogre. He sets again. I set Dissolver Rock and attack. He sets one more time. I use Raigeki and finish him off, winning a Lizark and completing the tournament all in one go. Light's so bright I ain't Kaiba's rod and return to the past. I try to beat the game now, but this goon won't duel me here and tells me to meet him in Simon's room. I set Wasteland to start. He summons his ace monster, Jirai Gumo. I boost Barrel Rock with Invigoration, activate Wasteland, and set it in defense. He sets a monster and puts Jirai in defense. I summon Stone Armadillo and attack because why the hell is he putting Jirai in defense? He summons Destroyer Golem and destroys my Armadillo. I set Rock Ogre number 2 and put Barrel Rock in defense. Mage Soldier suddenly decides he's running a rock only deck and fuses Destroyer Golem with Fairy Dragon to make Stone D and destroys my Barrel Rock. I set Dark Hole. He attacks me directly with Mystic Clown. I set Labyrinth Wall and now I'm safe. He tries to attack over it and sets the rest of his monsters in defense. I continue to stall, setting Dark Hole. He sets another monster. I use Axe of Despair and Invigoration on Barrel Rock and attack his Mystic Clown. He sets another monster. I set Invisible Wire because setting back row is cool and attack one of his face down monsters. He sets again. At this point, I'm just toying with him. I have Raigeki to wipe out his entire board, but I'm having too much fun with this deck and I don't want to end duels. When I finally do, I win Crass Clown, get the map to the Forbidden Ruins, head there with Satan, get harassed by Seto the Salesman, meet up with my old buddies, and celebrate the fact that I'm not dead with a Shadow Game. I start by dumping my monsters and leaving Destroyer Golem in attack. Jono summons Guilty of the D Knight and attacks my Golem. 
I draw on the labyrinth wall and Juno has no answers so the duel is paused until I draw something that beats him. You know, for a card that only costs 200 star chips, it really lives up to its name of being a wall. You can get through so much of the campaign with this card alone, it's crazy. After a few back and forths, I beat Jono second and duel Tayana second next, who surprisingly is one of the few duelists that can actually deal with Labyrinth Wall because she can have stop defense in her deck. I set Invisible Wire to start. She sets a magic card, could be stop defense. I summon Destroyer Golem and attack. She reveals her magic card to be Silver Bow and Arrow, uses it on her Dark Witch and attacks my Destroyer Golem. I dump my monsters and set Barrel Rock. She destroys it and triggers Invisible Wire. I use Dark Hole to get rid of Dark Witch. Tiana fuses Lunar Queen Elzyme with Wing Egg Elf to make Mystical Elf and puts it in defense. I set another Dark Hole. She attacks with Winged Egg of New Life. With no luck on draws, I use Dark Hole. She fuses Petite Angel with another Lunar Queen Elzyme to make Dark Witch and attacks. I can't believe I'm having this much trouble with Tiana's second. I dead draw again and set Invisible Wire. She triggers it with Dark Witch and attacks me directly with Shining Friendship. Another dead draw. I have too many non-monster cards in the deck and will need to change that. I dump Dark Hole, Raigeki, and a Wasteland while activating a second Wasteland. She fuses her Shining Friendship with Goddess with Third Eye to make another Dark Witch and attacks me directly leaving me with only 900 life points. I use Axe of Despair on Rock Ogre Grotto number 2 and set it to defense. She sets a monster and puts her Dark Witch in defense. I summon Minamushi Warrior to destroy her Witch and attack her face down with my Ogre. She sets a monster. I set Invisible Wire and attack. She summons Aku Beam and tries to take advantage of its Saturn Star to attack over Minamushi Warrior but triggers Invisible Wire. I summon Stone Ghost and end the duel. I still can't believe it was this difficult. Let the farming begin with our favorite third rate duelist with a fourth rate deck. If you didn't know, Kaiba is fantastic to farm because he drops strong magic and trap cards including Dragon Capture Jar, Crush Card, Bright Castle, Harpy's Feather Duster, Acid Trap Hole, and Widespread Ruin. Specifically for this rock only run, I'm looking for him to drop Minamushi Warrior, Sandstone, and Destroyer Golem, which drop at every rank so there are pretty great odds that he will give me something I want. Now farming him is easier said than done. He usually has a blue eyes that needs to be dealt with at some point and he loves to fuse into Crimson Sunbird. However, having so many magic and trap cards makes lowering my rank to A tech pretty easy once I've dealt with Kaiba's initial threats. The first win gets me widespread ruin, so now farming him has become even more manageable. Win 31 gets me Bright Castle, so now I have 6 equipped cards that work on every monster I have. And Win 50 gets me Sandstone, which is now my second strongest attacking monster next to Minamushi Warrior. It's time to take down a High Mage, so we're starting with the easiest one, the Sea Shrine. Unlike High Mage Sekmatin, the Ocean Mage has a very consistent Umi deck filled with Aqua, Fish, Sea Serpent, and Thunder monsters, so I'm not expecting a quick duel. I dump the monsters, leaving Destroyer Golem in my hand. Ocean Mage starts with a decent monster in Deep Sea Shark. I draw on the Labyrinth Wall and you know I'm setting that bad boy down. Ocean Mage puts his Deep Sea Shark in defense and attacks my wall with another one. I activate Wasteland. He activates Umi. I activate Wasteland. He activates Umi. Okay, I don't think this is over yet, bitch. I still have one more Wasteland, but in the meantime, I'll dump a couple cards. Ocean Mage shows me who the Alpha is and fuses Electric Lizard with Thunder Dragon to make everyone's favorite card and attacks my warrior with a shark. I draw into two more equips so it's time to unload them onto Destroyer Golem and attack his shark. He sets a monster. I set Widespread Ruin and destroy his THTD. Ocean Mage fuses Fire Kraken, Tacraminos, and Giant Turtle who feeds on flames to make Sea King Dragon which was a pretty cool fusion and I like it. I dump monsters again and attack his Sea King Dragon. He triggers my trap with Amphibious Bugroth and destroys my ogre with his shark. I decide to set Rock Ogre Rotor number 2 and attack his face down card to bait him into keeping his shark in attack. He sets a monster, the bait works and he attacks. I set Widespread Ruin and destroy his shark. He sets a monster. I told this dude I had another wasteland. There's no way this field is being kept at sea for this whole duel. I refuse to give him any control. Ah, okay, man. I finally get enough equipped cards to make a second formidable monster in Barrel Rock, 
try to attack over his defense monster, but the Saturn Star saves his turtle bird. That was the last hiccup. I boost Storm Armadillo up, and the duel is won. Let's move on to High Mage Sekbatin. His strongest monsters are Crab Turtle, Suijin, and Dark Magician, and also has both walls in Millennium Shield and Labyrinth Wall. Strangely, he doesn't have Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon itself, but has a lot of fusion materials to make it. I start the duel with Wasteland. Sekbatin fuses Thunder Dragon with Kaminari Attack to make our boy and attacks. Two Invigorations and a Break Castle makes for a beefy Stone Armadiller, and I attack over THTD with the Uranus Guardian Star. He sets a monster with a Uranus Star, so it could be Labyrinth Wall or Millennium Shield. I set Widespread Ruin and attack, revealing it to only be a Boulder Tortoise. He sets again. I set another Widespread Ruin and attack. He sets yet again. I summon Sandstone and attack. Now, I thought he'd have something to attack over Sandstone, but he must have got his deck from Grandpa Mudo because it's pathetic. I summon another Sandstone and attack again. He draws something to attack over a sandstone, and triggers a ruin. With an empty field, the duel is won. So, with Sekmatin defeated and the Millennium Ring claimed, I can now go back to Free Duel and farm him for a 33 out of 2048 chance of getting more walls in the BCD ranks, and a 25 out of 2048 chance of getting Giant Soldier of Stone at the SA Power ranks. He didn't prove to be too difficult of a grind. I lost once every 4 duels, but that's not enough for me to deem farming him inconsistent. Win 19 gets me Black Pendant, which works with a fair amount of rock types, but I have so many equips already that I decide against it. Win 33 rewards me with Labyrinth Wall. Now the ability to stall with this deck is much higher because I'm putting back in 3 magical labyrinths, and while I'm here I may as well go back to Kaiba and try and get another attacking monster. Win 78 gives me Minamushi Warrior. I would have preferred Destroyer Golem, but I gotta take what I can get because now it's time for the big hurdle of this run. Farming Heishin. When it comes to the rock archetype, a lot of cards are locked behind beating Heishin, and that's why I tried to beat him in the campaign earlier. I wanted to see if it was even possible. But now that I have 3 Labyrinth Walls and a plethora of equipped cards to boost my monsters, it should be possible to stall long enough to beat him at least once every 3 duels. The biggest hurdle to overcome is his 61.7% chance to summon something stronger than 3000 attack on turn 1. But once I deal with that, and as long as he doesn't use Megamorph on something, I should be good from that point onward. The only issue here is that using up so many turns and equip cards means winning in the SA power ranks is pretty much impossible, so getting Stone D and Millennium Golem right now is out of the question. Win 5 gets me Stone Ogre Grotto, which is now my strongest attacking card. Win 7 gives me the thing that hides in the mud, which triggers a thought. I now have 5 monsters that all get boosted by Dark Energy, and the monster I'm grinding Heishin for, Mystical Sand, can also use it. So I'm going back to Kaiba to farm for it, as well as another chance at Destroyer Gold. Win 88 gets me Crush Card, so I have a greater chance of destroying Heishin's big threats. And Win 91 gets me Dark Energy. I didn't get Destroyer Golem, but the deck is so consistent now that I'm going to hold off on farming Heishin for the big boss monsters of this deck, and take on some of the High Mages. So, let's go back into the campaign and head into the Desert Shrine. I start by setting Sandstone. Desert Mage plays a Trap Guard. I set a second Sandstone. He summons Punk King, the King of Ghosts, and destroys one of my monsters. I set Widespread Ruin. He sets a monster and puts Punk King in defense. I set Labyrinth Wall. The Mage plays a monster, triggers my trap with Punk King, tries to attack over my wall with Stone Arger Grotto, and his armored zombie gets walled by sandstone. I use invigoration on... Wait a second. Easter Island statues were made by the Rapa Nui people between the 13th and 16th century. According to the instruction booklet of the game, in the dedication letter on page 5, a slab illustrating a battle between the pharaoh and high priest dates back to 3000 BC. So, how am I using a card in ancient Egypt depicting monoliths from over 4000 years in the future? Uh, my immersion has suddenly been obliterated. Despite that, I try to attack into Stone Ogre Grotto, but get stopped by Desert Mage's face down fake trap. This dude uses Breath of Light to destroy all my monsters, which I can't even be mad about because it's just cool to see that card actually being played. He then attacks me directly. I'm in trouble now with three magical labyrinths in my hand, so I dump them all and set Minamushi Warrior. He plays a trap card and attacks me again. I need something in this hand, and I get Stone Ogre Grotto with two dark energy. I try to attack, but he has another fake trap to stop me. He sets a monster and puts his other ones in defense also. 
I summon Destroyer Golem and destroy his two face-up monsters. He destroys my Golem with his previously set Shadow Ghoul and sets another monster. I have had enough of his nonsense and use Raigeki and attack directly. He sets a monster. I set Labyrinth Wall and attack. He sets again. I use Invigoration on Minamushi Warrior, attack his set monster, and finish him off with my wall. I win Akakisu and proceed to High Mage Mardis and his mess of a deck. He shouldn't be too much of a problem as the worst he can play are a boosted Brachio Raidus or Mammoth Graveyard. I mean Great Mammoth of Goldfine, it's the exact same card, whatever. I start by setting Labyrinth Wall. He sets a monster also. I set another wall. He tries to attack with Dark Magician and fails. I boost Minamushi Warrior with Bray Castle, set it to Venus Star and attack over his Dark Magician. He summons Stone D to destroy my warrior. I set Magical Labyrinth. He sets all his monsters to defense. I'm not worried about Mardis being able to attack over Labyrinth Wall, so I set Wasteland and just bide my time for equip cards. He tries to attack over my other wall with Stone D and sets another monster. I decide biding my time is wasting my time and dump my hand. I also use Magical Labyrinth on a wall because I may as well do something. He summons Kazijin to destroy my Sandstone. I dead draw again, so I dump a few cards. Mardis attacks with Kazijin again. I set Widespread Ruin. He sets all his monsters in defense. I set my third wall down. Mardis opts not to attack. I set Wasteland down for no reason. Mardis triggers Widespread with Kazijin, then tries to attack over my wall with Megami. I use Bright Castle and Invigoration on Stone Ogre Grotto and attack Megami. Mardis sets a monster. I boost Sandstone with Invigoration and try to destroy a monster but get walled by his Mammoth. He attacks with his Mammoth next turn. I use Crush Card and it only destroys two monsters which means the others are walls. He sets again. And now it's time to wait until I can attack over his own walls. The duel is won, it's just taking a while to get to that win screen. Eventually I draw Raigeki and claim another Millennium Item. We got the easy shrines out of the way, so let's see how this deck fares against a little tougher of an opponent at the Mountain Shrine. The great thing about rocks is most of them have the Uranus Star, which is strong against Pluto, so Thunder types, particularly Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon and Sang of the Thunder, aren't that big of an issue. Wing Beasts are a little scarier because Saturn is strong against Uranus, but the only one worth worrying about is Crimson Sunbird. I set the thing in defense. Mountain Mage is trying to beat the game with THTD and attacks. 3300 attack is a lot to get over, so I use Crush Card. He fuses Baby Dragon and Wicked Dragon with the Ursat's head to make Kimura Dragon and attacks. I dump Minamushi Warrior and boost Stone or Gagrota with Bright Castle and Invigoration to attack. He summons Crow Goblin and uses that Saturn Star to boost over my Ogre. I got my boosted wall now, so I should be safe unless he draws stop defense. Thankfully he doesn't have it and fuses One-Eyed Shield Dragon with Harpy Lady to make Harpy's Pet Dragon and sets both monsters in defense. I set Widespread Ruin. He fuses his Harpy's Pet Dragon with Kaminari Attack to make... Come on, you know by now. I dump a couple monsters. He sets a Magic Card, triggers my trap with Crow Goblin, and attacks with THTD. I set Raigeki for next turn. He sets a monster. I boost Stone or Grotto three times. Use Raigeki and attack. He sets again. I set Widespread Ruin, attack with my Ogre, then attack directly with my Wall. Now there's no way Mountain Mage isn't going to try to destroy Labyrinth Wall, so he triggers Widespread Ruin and now I have an open path to his uh, victory. Because he called me an idiot last time, he doesn't get to just fade away like everyone else. Next up is High Mage Atenza, who can very easily take me out with if he draws well. I decide to dump Minamusha Warrior and two Bright Castles on Labyrinth Wall so he can't attack over me with Black Skull Dragon. He summons a Mars Star Monster and face down attack, which means the lucky scumbag not only got his 1 out of 2048 chance to have Meteor Black Dragon in his deck, but also played it on turn 1. I dump more monsters so I can draw something to take out MBD and leave Barrel Rock and attack to show- I'm no punk bitch! I ain't no punk bitch, neither! I'm no punk, I'll punk come bitch! <laughs> He summons THTD to take out Barrel Rock and leaves MBD in attack. I set Widespread Ruin, which couldn't have come at a better time because Atenza uses Dragon Treasure on Meteor Black Dragon to attack over Labyrinth Wall. 
I boost Stone Over Grotto three times and attack his THDD. He sets a monster. I play Wasteland to nullify any other threats and attack. He sets again. I summon another Ogre and attack. He summons Punished Eagle and with that pesky Saturn Star attacks over my weaker Ogre. I use Dark Energy on the thing that hides in the mud, set it to Jupiter Star and attack Punish Eagle. He summons Serpent Night Dragon to destroy my mud thing and the duel is won. Another High Mage down, another Millennium Item obtained, and at this point I'm having a great time with this run. But before I take out the last two shrines, I have to rescue a damsel from the High Priest setup. The Bald Mage is up first. Ooh, I love setting widespread ruin to start. Labyrinth Mage sets a monster. I activate Wasteland. He triggers my trap with Old Faithful. I set Labyrinth Wall. He sets a monster. I set Raigeki for later. He tries to attack over my wall, the Sangra of the Thunder, and sets another monster. I set another wall. He tries to attack over it again. I boost Minamushi Warrior with two Invigorations and use Raigeki to attack directly. He destroys my warrior with Kazijun. I set Magical Labyrinth. He fuses Stone Ogre Grotto with Skelgon to make Stone D, and at this point the duel comes to a halt. We both have walls preventing the other from attacking, so either I get enough equip cards to attack over his, or he draws stop defense to attack over mine. Neither scenario happens, and this moron decides to attack one of my face down monsters with Toon Alligator, which is weak enough for me to reduce his life points to zero. Right, right, left, right. We've made it through the maze and have come to test the strength of our rocks against Seto Second. Oh, and save Tiana or whatever. I play Wasteland to start. Seto thankfully doesn't play Gate Guardian and attacks with Blackluster Soldier. I dump my monsters and put Labyrinth Wall in defense. Seto plays a face down attack monster and ends. I use Magical Labyrinth on my wall for a little insurance in case he does play Gate Guardian. He plays another face down attack monster. I set another wall. He sets a trap card. I set crush card for later. He sets another trap card and gets walled. I use another Magical Labyrinth. He plays a third trap card. I dump more monsters. He uses Swords of Revealing Light and destroys my time traveling statue. I set Widespread Ruin. He plays another face down attack monster. I set another Widespread. He plays his fifth face down attack monster. Man, I'm so lucky Labyrinth Wall is a rock type. I set Sandstone so he can trigger my Widespread Ruins. He doesn't fall for it though. The Swords are down so I boost Destroyer Golem with one Dark Energy, activate Crush Card and attack triggering his Acid Trap Hole. He triggers one of my traps with Sangha of the Thunder. I summon Minamushi Warrior and trigger his two fake traps. He tries to retaliate, but I still have one more ride spread ruin. I boost Barrel Rock three times and win the duel getting Guardian of the Labyrinth. Seto's ecstatic about losing, which my dumbass friends somehow catch on to. I ditch them to go be a hero and head to the Forest Shrine. I dump Minamushi Warrior and set Sus Statue in defense. The Forest Mage destroys it with Hercules Beetle. I boost Stone over Grotto twice and attack his Beetle. He sets a monster, and after a few dominant turns, the duel is over. Forest Mage is an easy duel at this stage in the game. He has no surprises in his deck, and his good monsters have a fairly low chance of being in his deck at all. Now, High Mage Anubisius is another story. He has a 32% chance to summon a 4,000 attack monster on turn 1 and can have a lot of equipped cards in his deck to boost others. I dump Magical Labyrinth and use Wasteland. He sets a magic card. I set Widespread Ruin. He fuses Nicogal number 2 with Rock Ogre Grotto number 2 to make Mystical Sand number 2 and triggers my Widespread number 2. I set another Widespread Ruin. And Obisius figures if I'm doing the same moves, he may as well do the same moves, also fusing Nekogal number 2 with Millennium Golem to make another Mystical Sand and trigger my trap. I dump Minamushi Warrior, boost Stone or Grotto with Bright Castle, and attack back. He sets a monster. I boost my Ogre further with Dark Energy and destroy his Flame Cerebrus. He sets again. I summon Destroyer Golem and attack. 
he sets one more time. I use Crush Card, and the duel is won. He didn't play perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, Great Moth, or even Javelin Beetle. It doesn't get much easier than that when dueling a High Mage. I claim the Millennium Key and head to the last shrine before the final six, the Metal Shrine. I draw two widespread ruins, but make the uncharacteristic decision to dump Barrel Rock and play Mud Thing whatever in defense. He destroys it with Empress Judge. I have all three widespread ruins in my hand and am itching to play them, but first use Wasteland, which gets overturned instantly. I set Labyrinth Wall. He tries to attack over it with his Empress and sets a monster. Oh baby, it's time. Now that Metal Mage has a wall of monsters, I set Raigeki to use once I get a decent attacking monster. I dump my hand, use Invigoration on Minamushi Warrior, activate Raigeki, and attack directly. He triggers a trap. I use Invigoration on Labyrinth Wall just for style points. He sets a monster, which is definitely Millennium Shield, so he has me walled. But a few turns go by, and Metal Mage just can't help himself, so he attacks with two Invaders of the Throne, giving me something to do damage on and win the duel. The Metal Mage is everyone's go-to in farming, because he gives so many great cards, and for a rock-only challenge run, he does drop Giant Soldier with Stone on SA Pow at a 46 out of 2048 chance. Which is a good card, but I opted not to farm for it because the deck is already good enough as it is. We don't want to make it too easy. So, on to High Mage Kapura, who on most occasions is not easy. I dump a couple cards and put Marty McFly in defense. Kapura attacks with Black Skull Dragon. I set Widespread Ruin. He triggers it with his dragon, but he has another one waiting. I use Raigeki to destroy his other dragon. He sets a trap card. I dump Crush Card and play Mud Thingy because I need a monster to put all these equip cards on. He summons Gaia the Dragon Champion to destroy my Mud Pie. I draw a third Dark Energy and 3200 attack is pretty good, so I decide to boost the thing with too long a name and set it to Jupiter and attack his champion. Kapura is a sandbagging scumbag and summons Gate Guardian. I have no other choice but to set Widespread Ruin. He triggers it with Gate Guardian and attacks with Harpy's Pet Dragon. I set Labyrinth Wall. He fuses Harpy's Pet Dragon with Kaminari Attack to make Old Faithful and gets walled. I activate Wasteland. He sets a monster and puts THTD in defense. I summon Minamushi Warrior to destroy his THTD. He destroys my warrior with Red Eyes Black Dragon. I dump monsters. He attacks with Seiyaru, sets a monster, and puts Red Eyes in defense. I boost my wall with two magical labyrinths, so even a boosted Gate Guardian can't attack over it. He sets a monster. I set Widespread Ruin. He uses his face down legendary sword on performance of sword. I dump my monsters and boost Stone Ogre Grotto with Invigoration to attack his red eyes. He sets another monster. I boost Sandstone with Invigoration, set it to Mars so performance of sword can't attack over it, and destroy his face down Hercules Beetle and his Say Are You. Kapura activates Sogin so that Performance of Sword can indeed attack over Sandstone, but I have Widespread Ruin waiting for him. I'm running low on cards now, so I keep Crush Card for any more threats Kapura may have, set Labyrinth Wall, attack his Set Moon Star monster with my Sun Star Stone Ogre, and take the risk to attack with Sandstone, but it can't get over Megami. He summons Thousand Dragon and destroys my Sandstone. I activate Wasteland and attack over his Thousand Dragon. He fuses Taiho number 2 with Giant Soldier of Stone to make Stone D, and because the CPU doesn't take equip cards into account before determining if it can win the duel with an attack, Kapura attacks into my Stone Ogre Grotto. I boost Sandstone with two Bright Castles and attack. He sets a monster, and with one more boosted monster, I win the duel. Whoo! It literally could not have been closer. If I'm struggling this much to beat Kapura, there's no way I can defeat the final six. So, after collecting the money in my eye and having Seto ask me if I would like to sign up for a new credit card today, I head back into Free Duel to farm Heishin. This time, I'm winning a lot more than losing, and not having to worry about what rank I get means I can end the duel as quickly as I can so it isn't such a slog. After 21 wins, I get Mystical Sand, the main boss monster of this deck. But I'm not done farming Heishin yet. He still drops two more great rock types, and now that I have Mystical Sand, getting at least an A-POW is possible. 
I want one more set of a decent monster to be my main attacker, and I don't think Stone Orc or Grotto is good enough to fill that criteria. Getting 8 pals is still proving difficult, but all it takes is one time of actually getting it to reward me a Stone D after 52 wins. I would have preferred Millennium Golem because it can equip Axe of Despair, unlike Stone D, but regardless, I think the deck is good enough to try. So let's go to Vash Shrine, where Seto awaits to give us passage into the Dark Shrine to face Heishin. But before we topple Haitian's Tyranny, we're stopped by Croc and Crow, who, believe it or not, voluntarily wear those outfits. Sebek is the first we got a duel, and although he's the easiest of the final six by far, he still has a 56% chance to play either Metal Zoa or Zoa on turn one to apply the pressure. I set Widespread Ruin. Sebek sets a trap card also. I dump my hand, boost Stone D with Bray Castle, and put it in defense because I'm worried his trap card is Acid Trap Hole. Sebek summons Metal Zoa and triggers my trap. I get the perfect hand and use it all. I attack with Stone D this time because I don't want his face down to be Fake Trap stopping my Golem's attack, so I risk it being an Acid Trap Hole, which it thankfully isn't. He summons another Metal Zoa to destroy my Stone D. I dump a couple weaker monsters, summon another Stone D, and attack. Sebek summons Launcher Spider to take out my Stone D. I play Raigeki and attack for game, winning a Pendulum Machine. Of the two Royal Mages, Neku is by far the harder duel. He has much more monsters that do not only get the boost from the Yami field, but are strong on their own. They also have a wide range of Guardian Stars, so he can surprise you by getting cosmic alignment advantages and attacking over your monsters. I start by dumping monsters and using Invigoration on Labyrinth Wall. Neku sets a monster. I set a widespread ruin. Naku sets another monster. I set Crush Card. He sets again. I use Magical Labyrinth to further boost my wall. He sets once again. Now I have to be careful because Neku can have stop defense in his deck and would most likely do 4000 damage on the turn he uses it. So I boost Mystical Sand with Dark Energy, use Crush Card, and attack with both my Sandy Female and Wall. Neku falls for the trap of attacking my Labyrinth Wall and triggers Widespread Ruin. I summon another Mystical Sand, and that's game. I win Castle Dark Illusions, one of my favorite cards in the game, but you're gonna have to wait for another challenge run to understand why. And go down the hall and meet up with Heishin. His second iteration has a staggering 86% chance to play a monster with at least 3000 attack, with the weird omission of Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth. My hand isn't the greatest to start with, so I dump my Barrel Rocks. Heishin summons the weakest of his first turn monsters in Metal Zoa. I decide to dump everything except Invigoration because I need to get something on the field quick before... Well, before Heishin does that. He destroys my Sandstone and I take a beefy 4300 damage. I have no other choice but to dump Barrel Rock and Labyrinth Wall, boost Stone Ogre Grotto with Invigoration and Bright Castle, set it to Sunstar and attack Metal Zoa. Hopefully this is enough to buy me one more turn. It's not even close. Now, the logical thing to do is ensure a stomping like this doesn't happen again. So, I should go back into Free Duel, Duel Heishin until he drops Millennium Golem, Duel Shoddy until he drops Raigeki, Duel Pegasus until he drops Megamorph, and while I'm at it, Duel Mountain Mage until he drops Dying Keto the Cure Master, which you can fuse two of to make another Megamorph. Then the deck will be so beefed up that there's no way I won't make it through the final six. I start by using Wasteland. Sebek is trying to make me regret not farming in Free Duel and attacks with Metal Zoa. I set Labyrinth Wall. He sets a trap card and opts to not attack. I set Widespread Ruin. He sets another trap card and chooses to not attack again, which is really starting to raise my suspicion on whether or not this guy can see my face down cards. I get no equipped cards, so I dump my hand, leaving Mystical Sand and setting Stone D in defense. Sebek sets a third trap card and triggers Widespread Ruin. I set another Widespread Ruin and attack with Stone D, knowing it's very likely his back row is either Acid Trap Hole or Fake Trap. He tries to attack with another Metal Zoa and it suffers the same fate. I set my third Widespread Ruin. He sets his fourth Trap card. I dump my Wasteland and trigger a trap with Mud Boy. I realize now I'm dueling against myself as he plays another back row Trap card. But it doesn't matter because Mystical Sand with three equipped cards is a win. I choose not to equip them this turn as I want Sebek to try to attack and trigger my widespread ruin so I can attack directly again next turn. By the way, my attack getting through means all three of his back row cards are Goblin Fan. 
He summons a third Metal Zoa to repeat what the other two went through, and I gotta say, his deck this duel is crazy. It's very rare for him to have three Metal Zoas, but to also have three Goblin Fans and two Acid Trap Holes in the first 12 cards of his deck is such a tiny percentage I need to go buy lottery tickets after witnessing it. Hopefully Neku doesn't get this kind of luck. I start just like last duel with Wasteland. Neku summons Skull Knight. I set Labyrinth Wall. He tries to attack over it and sets a monster in defense. I use Invigoration on Mystical Sand and attack Skull Knight. He sets a monster. I set Widespread Ruin and destroy his Zoa. Neku uses Swords of Revealing Light to delay the duel. I set another wall down. He sets again. I set one of three Sandstones. He triggers my trap with a face down Skull Knight, destroys my Sandstone with Dark Magician, and another Magician gets walled. I set Crush Card for when Swords are up. He sets a monster and puts his Magicians in defense. I summon Sandstone, use Crush Card, and attack with everyone to win the duel. Let's try this again, shall we? Heshin loves to use Megamorph when he's ahead, so I have to get a threat on my side of the field fast. I dump cards, leaving Mystical Sand and Dark Energy. Heishin gets his 49% chance to play Gate Guardian on turn 1. I get two more equips, but that still isn't enough to beat over Gate Guardian, so I set Stone D and hope for the best. The best comes in the form of... No! I just got done saying I don't want this to happen, look what happens. Thankfully, the heart of the cards come in clutch, and I set that baby down immediately. He triggers it with Gate Guardian. It's a good thing the CPU always attacks with their strongest monster first. Then attacks directly with Black Skull Dragon. I dump Sandstone and unload equips into Mystical Sand, then attack Beast Skull. He Shin plays a face down attack monster. I boost Mystical Sand further with Break Castle and attack. He sets a monster. I set Labyrinth Wall and attack again. He summons Zoa because he can see my Labyrinth Wall and knows it can destroy it. I boost Stone Ogre Grota twice and attack. He sets his last monster. I use Crush Card to destroy it and attack for game. Dildo Chin gets sent to the Shadow Realm. Seto robs my Ray Drop and acts like he did nothing wrong. He then tells me I have the wrong blood type for the Millennium Items or something and opens the passage to the Royal Tomb so we can have a cool backdrop for our duel. Seto's deck is insane. He has a 79% chance to play either Gate Guardian or Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon on turn 1 and a 98% chance to play one of these 6 cards. The pressure is guaranteed to be there on turn 1. I begin by setting our favorite trap card. Seto summons a Gate Guardian that triggers widespread. I decide to set another one and Seto doesn't even want to deal with it so he brushes it away. I dump my monsters and use Bright Castle on Labyrinth Wall because it's unlikely Seto has another Gate Guardian or Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon so this should keep me safe. He puts a face down attack monster on the field and my plan worked. I set Crush Card to begin my setup. He plays another face down attack monster. With no good attacking options I set Rageki. Seto plays a third face down attack monster and now I'm gambling that he won't draw into anything that will take out my wall. So I dump my hand and boost the mystical sand with Bright Castle, use Crush Card and attack directly. Seto summons a face down attack Sunstar monster. There is only one card in his deck that he is willing to leave an attack but can't attack over mystical sand because the Mercury Star is strong against Sunstar and that's Blue Eyes White Dragon. I attack directly with another mystical sand and hope he doesn't draw anything crazy. He summons Old Faithful to take out a Mystical Sand. I use Wasteland, then Rageki, and win the duel. Settle Wines. I opt to not destroy the items, renew the pack with the Dark Lord, and regain the power to rule overall because Settle's plan sounded pretty good to me. But then Heishin spawns out of nowhere, I guess there's a big exit door in the Shadow Realm, and after refusing his demand to forfeit the items for a while, Dark Knight pulls up and notices the never-ending struggle we're in and decides to help out because he's such a good guy. To repay him for saving me from an eternity of refusing, I agree to have a friendly, no-strings-attached duel just for fun. Since nothing is at stake in this duel, Dark Knight isn't playing his strongest deck. His strongest monster is Meteor Black Dragon and he loves magic and trap cards. Compared to Seto III, he's a step down. Regardless, I don't take any chances and dump my hand. Dark Knight summons Black Skull Dragon and attacks. I boost Stone or Grotto three times, set him to Sunstar and attack his dragon. He plays a face down attack monster. I play Wasteland to get my Ogre over 3500 attack and there isn't much left that Dark Knight can do. He sets a monster. I dump some monsters and play Stone Deep. 
His face down monster was a Quagar Hercules, so he's already starving for monster cards. So much so, in fact, that he plays Shadow Spell while he has no monsters on the field. And this only happens when the CPU has all magics or trap cards in their hand. And if you didn't know, Dark Knight has 20 card hands, which means he has half his deck and not a single monster. I boost Mystical Sand with a Dark Energy, and the duel is over. Good thing this was just a friendly duel, and not a determinant for whether or not Dark Knight returns to an eternal slumber, or this would have been pretty embarrassing for him. Okay, I guess it was embarrassing. And after his hissy fit transformation, I'm forced to duel him once more. Nightmare has an overreaction after that last duel and throws away every magic and trap card he has in his deck. With a monster only deck, he has a 74% chance to play something with at least 3500 attack on turn 1. I set Widespread Ruin down. It's a good thing my starting hand had one because Nightmare triggers it with Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. I need to get something on the field, so I dump Stone Ogre Grotto and Crush Card, use Invigoration on Mystical Sand, and attack. For the third time in this final 6 run, my opponent plays a face down attack Blue Eyes White Dragon that can't beat over my 1 equip boosted Mystical Sand. I dump monsters and boost a second Mystical Sand with Dark Energy, attack his Blue Eyes White Dragon, and his Light Points. Nightmare actually retaliates with Cosmo Queen that gets a boost from its Venus Star to destroy one Mystical Sand. I draw into two more equips, and that's just enough to beat over Cosmo Queen. It's a good thing I got them too, because Nightmare next turn plays a face down attack Jupiter Star monster, and the only card that that can be is Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth. No need to see it, I use Crush Card to destroy it, and attack for game, proving that it is very much possible to beat Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories with a rock only deck. Nightmare, Dark Knight, whatever, is defeated, said it was naked, and I'm Pharaoh. It was a great run, the rock archetype is a lot of fun to focus on, and without restricting yourself to rock holding monsters, there are a lot of fusions to get creative with. The deck I used to beat the game was nowhere close to optimal. I could have made it easy, which is an unexpected thing to say in a single card type run, and farmed a lot more on Friedel, but I'm more concerned with proving it's possible to beat the game than with using the best possible deck. However, I do have a best deck in mind, and here it is. For monsters, we have Mystical Sand, Stone D, Millennium Golem, Stone Orger Grotto, Giant Soldier Stone, and Labyrinth Wall. You can argue that substituting Destroyer Golem for Giant Soldier Stone makes more sense because it can use Dark Energy and has more attack. For magics, we have 3 Ryagekis, 2 Harpies Feather Dusters, and 2 Wastelands. For equips, we got Megamorph, Bright Castle, Invigoration, and Dark Energy. And to get us to 40, 3 Widespread Ruins. For you curious folk, here are the total duels in Free Duel. The hardest grind was Hei Shin, of course, but the satisfaction of getting to a point where I was able to win consistently made up for the struggles. Well, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching this rock only path to the end. If you did, please feel free to comment what else you'd like to see from me, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And check out other challenge runs I've done. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.